Hello and welcome to my DaVinci Resolve 15 tutorial. This tutorial is for beginners that haven't ever worked with DaVinci Resolve. I will cover how to import, how to edit, how to work with audio in DaVinci Resolve and how to export. Color grading and animation will not be covered in this video. More advanced topics will be released as separate topics later. Thanks and enjoy. When you open Resolve, you will be greeted by the Projects tab. And in the case that it is the first time opening it, there will only be this untitled project. So what we have to do is open a new project and name it. In my case, I just name it Demonstration. The start page of DaVinci Resolve is by default the Edit tab. The name already implies that this tab is used to edit video, but it has one shortcoming. It, it isn't very good to organize media. For this, you need to go to the Media tab, where you can import media to your project. All you need to do here is to maneuver to the folder where you save all of your raw material for your videos and open it. And in my case, it is data drive D and I will just open an old project to demonstrate. I did a video quality comparison between two cameras quite recently. So I'm just going to take two of those clips and drag them into my media pool. That's this area here. I'm now going to drag and drop the two clips that I wanted. And you will get a prompt that is going to ask you if you want to change the frame rate of your project. Once you have done this, you can't undo it. The only way to undo it is to delete all the media in the, in the pool. So in the media pool and start over. Once you actually have some active media, on your timeline, there's no way you can change it later in export after you're done editing. So think about what you need right now and not later. I'm gonna import two different clips, one from a smartphone in 30 frames per second. The, addition, the info about the clip is here on the right. It shows here 30 frames per second, 1080p, two channel audio. And the other one is a 25, come on. The other one is a 25 frames per second clip, also in 1080p, two channel audio, but from a DSLR. And I did a comparison between those two, but it doesn't matter right now. So once you've imported your clips that you want to edit, then you need to head over to the edit tab where you already started. And you now either create a timeline with right click and create a new timeline, or you just drag and drop your clips to your timeline. Since this is a relatively short clip, it automatically gives me the waveform here. If the clip is a bit longer or a bit bigger, it's going to take a while till that waveform is created, especially if you have multiple audio channels. So since I don't want to show how my desk looks like, because it always looks dirty, I'm just going to search for the part where you can actually see me and not my desk anymore. And as you can see here, so this is about where I'm then going to start talking. Here the light is already pretty nice. So I go to edit mode or racer edit mode. I either click here or press B and what this does is it separates clips on the point where you want to separate them. So click, click to undo this. You simply press control C like in most programs, What sometimes can be a bit annoying is if you move around and want to cut something sort of next to that marker to the marker. If you want to cut something next to the marker and not exactly where the marker is, then you undo the snapping. I mean, it's a nice magnet sign. It's a nice magnet sign. 
So now you can also do cuts right next to where you're situated in your timeline. But I usually recommend keeping that tool on because it's actually helpful. So I cut this part out and I don't want to use it. So I want to get rid of it. And what I can do now is I can just click on it and hit delete. And it will automatically get rid of it and replace it. There are other options too. You can right click, you can just delete and it will leave a blank or you can press ripple delete which basically is the same as uh, pressing delete or you use the keyboard and press backspace so i'm gonna just click on it press delete and it's deleted so i want to have a nice fade into my video so you can either use this little handy tool here and create the fade. What you see here is not seconds, it's frames. And at 30, it switches to one. That's the best indication on how to spot frames versus seconds. The same thing goes for the audio here. I'm going to mute this for a second. And what you will see here when, when I start playing is it will now be a nice fade into the video. Another way to do this is to move to the end, wait till the cursor changes towards this bracket sign with the two arrows, hit right click and add cross dissolve. If you hit 30, I mean, it's going to do the exactly same thing as I did before and give you a nice fade. If you want to change the fade effect, you can go to this toolbox here and go to video transitions and my stand I set my standard effect as cross the solve, but you can also use something like additive the solve or blur the solve. Okay, I need to undo this now, delete. And I'm now going to add the 30 second blur this, uh, 30 frames blur dissolve, just so that you've seen it. Not really a fan of this one. I really like the cross dissolve, but you have a couple of different effects that you can apply here. You can play around with those effects. I am personally a, a fan of the cross the solve part. Now at the end I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm done talking here. I'm gonna switch razor mode with B and switch back to selection mode with A or click here and delete this one and add the other one, the other clip that I have. Switch again to edit mode with B cut here, switch to select mode with A again, delete this part, add a cross dissolve here, then I realize, hey, yeah, at the end there's more unnecessary stuff left where I turned off the camera, I cut it off and delete it and add another dissolve in the end. As you can see here, the cross dissolve works pretty well. It just fades two, Im uh, two videos into each other and doesn't do anything else that's, that's sort of fancy. So now that you've edited your basic video tab, it's time to save it. You can never save too often. And I personally also want to have music in my videos. So. I have a separate folder just for, just for copyright free music from YouTube. If you go to the YouTube Creator Studio, there you can download copyright free music. My favorite piece of music is Club of Free and I will just add this to the video right now. I'm just going to drag and drop it like, like before. Go back to the edit tab, 
go to the start and add in Clover 3. That's it. To the second audio track. Now I have two audio tracks. Let me unmute that and let me play it for you. As you can hear, the music is way too loud or I'm way too quiet. So an easy adjustment for that is this line here. There you can make something louder or quieter if it's just a volume that you're concerned about. I'm also going to make myself a bit louder. Go back. This is a video comparison between the Lenovo K6. So I am a bit too loud now, so I'm just gonna make the background music a bit louder again. So now that I think, hey, yeah, it's actually working pretty well, I go to the second clip, adjust that one. The Sony Alpha and as you can hear, it's way too loud. I mean, you could have, could have also judged, you could have also seen it just by how the waveform looks like. So I'm just going to decrease the volume of this by quite a bit. Comparison between the Sony Alpha and try to make them match somewhat. As you can hear, th that clip also has some pretty bad background noise, but I can't do anything about that one right now. The video is over at 36 seconds, but the music doesn't stop here. So we also need to shorten the music clip and as usual, just use the racer mode and then the selection mode and delete it. Now that we're done with a very basic edit, we can now go over to the Fairlight tab where we can do more advanced audio. And what you usually have to do is go to the right and expand this. I don't know why this isn't expanded by default, but I guess it's because if you have 99 tracks or something like that, it's gonna be a pain. Sorry, didn't want to do that. What we did before was to adjust one clip by one. If you now have, as an example, 20 different clips from the same source and they're all too loud or too quiet and you put them all in the same uh, track, like audio one or audio two, then you can simply adjust the volume of audio one or audio two, which is way easier than adjusting each clip for, for itself. Here in Resolve, in Fairlight, in the audio tab, you have some very basic audio editing possibilities. And I personally would start with making your waveform bigger so that you can actually see what you're doing instead of just listening to what you're doing. You have basic equalizer settings where you can, where you can adjust your EQ. Like in any other audio program, I'm not gonna explain this, how this works. Just going to point out it's there. You have basic dynamic settings where you can have, add a, exp an expander, a gate, a compressor, or a limiter, which is very handy. The other big advantage is you can adjust volume on the fly while playing it so that you can hear better how it would fit together. Because in the edit tab, you can't adjust and play at the same time. As you can see, it's locked. Now let's go back to Fairlight. And since there is nothing else to do for us, we can go to the deliver page where you can export our video. On the left top, we have different presets like YouTube, Vimeo, Final Cut, Adobe Premiere. And usually what I recommend is using custom. And as a format, depending on where you want to upload, I usually recommend MP4, H.264 codec, but there's no other option anyways. And now you can adjust your resolution. You can also add a custom resolution. Let's say I want to export this as a 1080p video to YouTube. I can set my resolution here to 1080p. Frame rate is locked at 30 because like we said before, we can't change that. Once we have 
put clips into our timeline. The quality we can set to best, high, medium, low and least. And in my experience, as long as you're not shooting anything in 4K, the highest you should go is high. Best is not going to give you any advantage, it's just going to make your file sizes bigger. Medium, I usually can't spot the difference between medium and high. Low, sometimes, depending on the quality, looks a bit grainy, at least I wouldn't recommend. Or you just limit the bitrate. If you go back up here, we have the ability to render, uh, render it as a single clip or as individual clips. So that would mean that we are able to either render those two clips separately, depending on how we edited them, or as a whole video, or as one big clip, which can be useful. And I'm explaining why in this video up here. Now let's go to audio. And I would just let this, and I would just let audio be audio and not adjusted. All you need to make sure is that export audio is checkmarked because sometimes it is not and then your render is useless because it doesn't have any audio. And finally, if you go to file, you can set where you want to save your video. I'm gonna put them under edited videos, 1080p, and I'm going to name it demonstration underscore one underscore English. All I now need to do is to add it to my render queue. And if I now decide, hey, yeah, I actually want that same video, but in, 10, in 720p, I need to go back to the video tab and set it to whatever resolution I want. In this case, I said I want 720p and I want least quality because I don't really care and I just want to see how it looks like. So I'm just gonna go there and put it in a different put it in my 720p folder edit and I can now either uh, select both of them with holding control down or just one of them by just clicking of them or multiples uh, depending on how many versions of your video you want you could also technically have multiple timelines in here and have a render queue of like 50 videos overnight doesn't matter it's all possible uh, in this case i'm just going to render this version for now so just so that you can see how it looks like when you render something there's nothing special about it it's just going to chew through it a video and export it and it's going to give you a nice little preview here the preview has nothing to do with how the video is actually going to look like it's not going to be that fast and now that you've exported your video, it is ready to upload and I hope this video was helpful. If it was helpful, then let me know in the comments. If it wasn't helpful at all, then also let me know in the comments. I really appreciate any kind of feedback. If you liked it, then also consider subscribing because there's more to come and more to discover on my channel. Thanks and bye bye.